In this video tutorial, we're going to be looking at two different types of heat exchanger. We're going to be looking at something called a parallel flow heat exchanger and something called a counter flow heat exchanger. Now for these two classifications, the heat exchanger itself can be exactly the same in construction. And the type of heat exchanger drawn on the screen here is called a shell and tube heat exchanger. So from the diagram, we have a tube in the center carrying a hot fluid and around the outside we have a shell or a water jacket carrying the cold fluid. What we have drawn here is a single pass heat exchanger. So we've only drawn one tube and one shell. But in reality, these heat exchangers can have a number of passes where the two fluids go backwards and forwards through the heat exchanger, which in effect increases the contact area. But we're going to keep things simple for this tutorial. Now on the diagram, we've specified the inlet and outlet temperatures of our hot fluid as 75 degrees C and 40 degrees C respectively. And we've also specified the inlet and outlet temperatures of our cold fluid as 15 degrees C and 35 degrees C respectively. In the bottom left hand corner, I've also included some additional data. We have surface heat transfer coefficients for fluid one and two as they make contact with the outside surface of the heat exchanger tube. What we're assuming here is that conduction through the walls of the heat exchanger is negligible when compared to the surface heat transfer effects. And in order for that to be true, the thickness of the walls would have to be negligible and the thermal conductivity would have to be relatively high. Now when we design heat exchangers, that's something that we try to do in order to optimise heat transfer between the two fluids. So we have our two surface heat transfer coefficients. We also have the diameter of the tube and we have the length of the tube. Note that we only have one diameter and one length, and that will be for the tube running through the centre, because the contact surface area between the two fluids is the outside surface of that tube. The diameter of the shell itself is irrelevant, because contact between the two fluids occurs at the surface of the tube. So over on the right hand side we have two different formulas for calculating rate of heat transfer. The one at the top we've seen previously, mass flow rate times specific heat capacity times temperature change. But in the example we're looking at here, we don't have a mass flow rate for the fluid and we don't have a specific heat capacity. So we're unable to use that particular formula. Instead, we're going to use the second formula, which states that rate of heat transfer equals UA times something called the log mean temperature difference. A is the contact area for the two fluids, as we discussed previously. U is the overall surface heat transfer coefficient and LMTD is something called the log mean temperature difference. And we'll see where that comes into play in a moment, but we have a formula for that written on the screen. So underneath our diagram, I've set up some axes and on the Y axis is temperature and on the X axis is distance along the heat exchanger. And we're going to use this in order to describe the two different classifications of heat exchanger, parallel and counter flow. Now the particular example that we have drawn here is a parallel flow heat exchanger and we know that because the two fluids are travelling in the same direction from left to right. So let's make a quick sketch of the temperature profile for each of those fluids. Over on the left hand side we have the hot fluid starting at 75 degrees C and dropping to 40 degrees C. Like so. And our cold fluid starts at 15 degrees C and rises to 35 degrees C. So we end up with something like this. Now delta TO and delta TI for our log mean temperature difference can be taken from this diagram because delta TI is the difference between our two inlet temperatures over here on the left hand side. Delta TI. And delta TO is the difference between the two outlet temperatures. So here we have delta T. Oh. So first of all we're going to calculate delta Ti and delta Ti using the data given, then we're going to calculate U and A, and then we're going to calculate the rate of heat transfer through this heat exchanger. So first of all, delta Ti for our parallel flow heat exchanger is going to be the difference between the inlet temperatures of our hot fluid and our cold fluid. Well we can see the hot fluid at inlet is at 75 degrees C, and the cold fluid at inlet is at 15 degrees C, giving us a delta Ti value of 60 degrees C. We can repeat for delta T O, and at the outlet, 
we have the hot fluid at 40 degrees C and the cold fluid at 35 degrees C. So 40 minus 35 equals 5 degrees C. Now using that data, we can calculate our log mean temperature difference because our log mean temperature difference is delta T O, 5, minus delta T I, 60, divided by the natural log of delta T O, 5, over delta T I, 60. Now running that through the calculator gives us a log mean temperature difference for the parallel flow heat exchanger equal to 22.134 degrees C, accurate to three decimal places. Next we can calculate our effective heat transfer coefficient U, and the formula for this is relatively straightforward. We have 1 over U equals 1 over H1 plus 1 over H2. Therefore 1 over U equals 1 over 400 plus 1 over 1100. 1 over U equals 3.409 times 10 to the minus 3. But note that it isn't 1 over U that we want, it's U. So if we do 1 over 3.409 times 10 to the minus 3, we get a U value equal to 293.3 recurring. Or 293.333 to 3 decimal places. That shares the same units as H, watts per metre squared Kelvin. OK, let's transfer those values for log mean temperature difference and U to the top of the page, and then we'll calculate the area and the rate of heat transfer. OK, so when it comes to calculating A, what we're actually calculating is the area that's in contact between the two fluids. And as we've already said, that's the outside surface of the tube that runs through the centre of the heat exchanger. So if we make a quick sketch, we can determine how we would calculate that area. So if this is the tube here, we need the surface area of the tube here. Now, as we've seen previously, the way that we would determine this is we would imagine cutting down one side of the tube, like so, and then we're going to open it flat to form a rectangle. So opening this flat, we have a rectangle. And if we assume that this top edge here is the cut edge, then we know that that is going to be the same as the length of the tube. The other side of our rectangle represents the circumference of the circle. And circumference is calculated doing 2 pi r. Therefore, the surface area in contact between the two fluids is 2 pi r times the length by multiplying the two sides of that rectangle together. So for the example we have given, the area is 2 pi times the radius. Well, the diameter is 8 millimetres, therefore the radius is 4 millimetres, but we need to express that in metres. 4 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.004, and the length of the tube is given as 15 metres. Therefore, the surface area in contact between the two fluids equals 0 0.3770 to 4 decimal places metres squared. Now finally we can calculate the rate of heat transfer because the rate of heat transfer is the U value 293.3 recurring times the area 0 0.3770 times the log mean temperature difference 22.1 Three, four, giving us a rate of heat transfer through our heat exchanger equal to 2,448 watts to the nearest whole number. Or we can transfer that into kilowatts, 2.448 kilowatts. In the next video, we're going to use the same construction of heat exchanger, except instead of having it configured as a parallel flow heat exchanger, we're going to have it configured as a counterflow heat exchanger.
And what we're going to determine is whether the length of tube required in order to achieve the same rate of heat transfer of 2.448 kilowatts is greater or less than 15 meters. So we're going to fix the rate of heat transfer and we're going to calculate the new length for a counterflow heat exchanger that would give the same rate of heat transfer. So essentially we're going to determine which configuration of heat exchanger is going to be more effective.